the Joe Rogan experience. Um, when you see gyms, you know, well, when you see gyms like mine that have all this equipment, all these different things, do you look at that as like that's excessive or unnecessary? Joe, that depends. That all depends on the circumstances. We're talking about CrossFit. Generally, like we talked about CrossFit, gym, CrossFit early, I think CrossFit gyms, I love CrossFit gyms. I mean, they have a few things I think are not necessary, but not so many. But they have a lot of great stuff, high pull-up bars and platforms and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. Those are essentials. But then beyond that is just whatever you add for yourself. And without knowing your training needs, uh, your background, I don't really, I can't evaluate your gym. Right. But I can tell you that most people have too much stuff. And that becomes a problem of choices. Mm. So you come in, you have this and this and that. So what are you going to do? Right. And you're just confused. What I is see. it called? Uh, the paradox of choice or something like that. Yes. Yes. Now, what about injuries? How often do you get injured from this kind of exercise? I've had a number of injuries in my life. All well, their contact injuries, like you know, fractures and things like that. Mm -hmm. They're not from they're not from lifting. From lifting, things were all tweaks. All of them were tweaks. Mm -hmm. But you know, tearing ligaments by falling and things like that. No, so you've never had issues with tendonitis or anything? Yeah, I've things? had a little some of that. Yeah. Some of that. Doing training pull ups too heavy and things like right. that. Things happen. What do you do to combat that? That's exactly what I got mine from. Sure. Yeah. Well, first of all, provided in the absence of medical restrictions, you just work around things. So you find things to do that work the area without aggravating it. That's mm -hmm. that's you know, that's kind of the age old prescription for what you want to do. And, but I'm telling you that a lot of things we do are allowing a lot of people to get back in the game, people who have been really injured before. And I can tell you that the techniques, we use a strong first kettlebell techniques and some other techniques, we have supporters amongst top healthcare professionals, people like Professor Stuart McGill, who is a top spine biomechanist in the world and who works with the elite of the elite of athletes and also the most broken down people. Greg Cook, who's a top physical therapist, people like that. So we have a very good track record of keeping people healthy. I like this old expression from George, the Russian lion, Hackenschmidt. Strength cannot be divorced from health. Mm. I think that's a great line. That's a great line. Yeah. That's a great line. I specifically have something with my bicep tendon. I think I got it from two things. I got it from training, uh, doing a lot of chin-ups, but also from archery. Because an archery, you're extending mm -hmm. as you're drawing back at the same time, and this particular muscle gets overworked. Because well, I have uh, Dr. Mark Chang. I know you know yeah, Dr. Dr. Chang. Help Doc check you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll talk to him. Mm -hmm. um, what about your diet? I'm an enemy of nutrition. I don't know anything an about it. I don't enemy like of it. nutrition. I, I hate it, man. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. It's such a confusing thing. I'm telling you. Yes. In, in training, it's really kind of funny about training. In training, like I do my thing, you do your thing, he does his thing, but we kind of, it's cool, right? Right. In nutrition, it's like it's the only way. Right. And uh, there are so many different variables that uh, it's very hard to keep track of. And so I, I just feel sorry for people in that field. I really do. <laughs> It's, it's an awful thing. You have thing. to constantly be reading papers. You have to constantly be studying. Yeah. And it's still hopeless. Yes. It's, it's just really hopeless. It's such a, you know, the body is a complex system, but I think this particular, this particular silo is worse than others. Yeah. It's just so nonlinear and it's just so difficult to figure this out. Biological variability is so confusing too. With one person, a diet would be optimal. The other person, it would be terrible. You know, I think what we should do is focus, whether it's in diet or in training, we should try to focus on things that are more universal. So, for example, in terms of longevity, uh, Dr. Nick Lane, who is a mitochondrial researcher, he made a very interesting point. He said, right now, for longevity, so many efforts are directed at uh, the genetic engineering, manipulation, whatever, fooling around, trying to make this really, really customized. And he said, you know, it's really interesting. Why don't we try to focus on something that's been known to work not just for any individual, it works for Practically much, pretty much every species, which is mitochondrial health. And he says that if we find a way of extending the lifespan to 130 years old, he's pretty sure it's going to come from mitochondrial health. And uh, the stimuli for mitochondrial health are pretty much well known. 
Well, there may be some more down the road, but now we do know. So, for example, in terms of nutrition, that's, that's fasting. In terms of exercise, it is both aerobic steady state exercise and that type of work for fast fibers that I told you about, anti-glycolytic training. And um, there's cold. So those are the stimuli, the primary stimuli for the mitochondria. So probably for nutrition, the same thing. They should look for more things that work for everybody. And then on kind of on the margins, try to fool around with um, customization. What about you personally? What kind of diet do you follow? Back some years ago, I met a very interesting gent, Ori Hoffmeckler, and he introduced me to uh, his so-called warrior diet. And I was not interested in any kind of a diet, any kind of a body comp changes. I'm just not into that kind of thing. But what attracted me is efficiency. He said to eat once a day. And I thought, sure, I'll try. And this was long before the current intermittent fasting craze has begun. So I don't think Ori is getting quite the credit he deserves. So I pretty much just eat, eat a large dinner and don't worry about it. Do you snack at all during the day no. or anything? Nothing. It kills me, man. Really? Yeah. And this has always been the case with you? If, if no. you snack, it kills you, or no. as you get older? Just no. As, as, since I started this this way of eating. So your body's acclimated to this one large yeah, meal. it did. It did. And I just feel great when I do that. you got to yeah. slam a lot of calories down in one oh, meal, yeah. though, right? Yeah. Like, what do you eat? Steak. Mostly. Of course. <laughs> no chicken. Just say no to chicken. Say no to chicken? Just say no. Why? What's wrong with chicken? I just lame. I don't like it. You don't <laughs> 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 what don't you like about it? The taste or what it stands a, for? It's a weak bird, so. <laughs> it is a weak bird. Yeah. Can't even fly. Just just say Helpless no, Joe. Just, just, just say no to chicken. Really? Yeah. Wow. What What about fish? Well, my wife makes me, I'll eat it. <laughs> not, not out of choice. But mostly meat. Yeah. Yeah. But you understand what I'm telling you is just personal choices, not, of course. Pro- not yeah, professional yes. recommendations. I understand. I understand. Totally out of, my, out of my wheelhouse. But what about vegetables? Uh, vegetables are just kind of a necessary evil. You, I do eat them. What's and, necessary about them? You know, this is an interesting point. Same doc, Nick Lane, did some research and summarized some other research. Like why are fruit and vegetables good for you? And the party line is the antioxidants. And they almost convincingly concluded that's not the case. Because if you just try to isolate antioxidants, just give it to people, they don't have the same effect. So the current theory, it's quite, you know, and it's very likely it's true, is uh, the plant toxins uh, pretty much promote hormesis. Hormesis pretty much resistance against stuff. So it's pretty much mild doses of poison that you take to make yourself stronger. Mm. So that's most likely what these things are good for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anytime you hear about antioxidants, this, antioxidants, that, it's unless they're prescribed by a doctor to a particular patient, a patient antioxidant supplementation might even cause cancer. So there's really? studies in that. Yeah. That's just not something to shotgun or go to the pharmacy, buy all this stuff. No. You should know exactly what you're taking them for and ha- should be a specific That should be. You should get the recommendation <laughs> prescription from your doctor. That is correct. Have you ever, do you know anybody that follows a carnivore diet? What's a carnivore diet? Carnivore diet is very recent. Within the last few years, people are eating only animal products. Okay. And the the great benefit that some people have had is people with autoimmune issues like skin conditions, eczema, things along those lines. It seems to cure it up. Uh, people with uh, severe arthritis. It's, I mean, by cutting out all plant foods completely, uh, some people with autoimmune issues have found uh, great results. Some people have found great results with depression, but it's extremely controversial. And, you know, uh, it's also ideologically troubling for some people. Some people don't want you to eat meat at all. So if you're eating only meat, this is terrible. You're sending a bad message. And... <laughs> you think so, that's funny? Okay, well, it sounds like a fun diet, man. It sounds awesome. You're, but you're I'm, all I'm completely unqualified to comment on that. Right. Yeah. But would you be interested in trying it? Would I be interested in trying it? Uh, 
I, when I see some more research on that, I might. Not yeah. that I'm a fan of vegetables or anything, so I'm, you know, I, I would consider it. You yeah. say vegetables with disdain. You say vegetables like you understand cowards. It's like a necessary <laughs> evil. You understand certain things. It's like your foam roller, Joe. But I'm you know, sh- you just do it. It's not, you well, don't enjoy that, it. That thing next to you, the Tim Tam, that's what I use instead of a foam roller. That jackhammer right underneath the tripod. Okay. That's uh that was invented by uh, MMA coach Faraz Sahabi. Okay. And uh, cool. more effective. So that's better than vegetables. Oh, quick, too. Right. Better Excellent. than vegetables? I don't Excellent. know. But better than foam roller. <laughs> I think so. But th- but that's what I'm saying. Like uh, For a guy like you that talks about vegetables with such disdain, I would think but that- But uh, it's a necessary evil, you understand. But is it? This is the thing. I'm, I'm not sure Based on the this. current- not, Well, the docs will tell you all this stuff about fiber and this and that. Mm-hmm. That's supposedly good. And again, that's that's not my specialty. Right. But this other point about hormesis, which is, again, building up your resistance- Yes. Resilience to things. Mm-hmm. So it's very possible vegetables are evil, and the small doses of this evil make us stronger. Small that is, doses. Like, well- well, tiny, like a quarter of your plate. Yeah, well, it should be more probably. Probably. <laughs> I don't know. It's just a funny subject with you. You have a, an interesting relationship. I told you, I'm an enemy of nutrition. I hate it. <laughs> I, I just really hate it. I, I have a sympathy, deep sympathy for people who are in that line of work. Now, do you supplement with multivitamins or creatine or anything along those lines? No, I don't. And, you know, creatine is definitely, supplementation is not my specialty either, but I can tell you creatine is one of those supplements that definitely has been tested extensively. And while not for everybody, it does work yes, for, it's also been, for a lot of people. It's also been proven as a nootropic, which I think is fascinating. So it's very possible. enhances cognitive performance. Again, yeah. out of my, I don't have cognitive performance, so... You don't have any kind of performance? I don't have any, so I'm not, not my thing. So, <laughs> now, What about vitamins? Do you take any vitamins? No. Not there's, there's, there's no evidence. And again, if, if you would get a prescription from your doc that you're short in this, mm-hmm. then you should. This is essentially not your wheelhouse. Absolutely not. 